Chapter 6.6 .6 in the book is all about hyperbolic trigonometry, which is great, and we'll do a little introduction to that. Uh, a lot of textbooks then have an integration review, like a kind of cumulative review of all the integration techniques we've seen, and so I throw a little bit of that into the homework as well. But let's do the uh, hyperbolic trig overview. Let's think about circular trig. We're based on the unit circle here, right? And if you draw an angle, uh, then the x-axis value of that is the cosine, and the y-axis value is the sine. And we get these graphs for sine and cosine. Not a big, I, not a big deal, uh, deal there. Um, and then the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So uh, let's go play with that. Just animate that a little bit, and then we'll see what it looks like for hyperbolic trig, where we have a minus sign here instead of a plus in the unit circle. Uh, what would be the unit circle formula? So here we are, we've got the unit circle. I've thrown in a parameter here that we'll play with in just a sec. Uh, this is just about coloring the area under that uh, slanted line there. And as I increase the angle, I'm using the black dot to track the height of the intersection point of this line with the, uh, with the circle. And actually, I, uh, this blue highlighted area should be this whole kind of pie slice. It's a little bug in my Desmos program here. Um, so we can think of that as an angle, or we can think of that as an area, and actually the area is half the angle. It's kind of complicated, uh, but don't worry about that. But then as we increase that area, what happens to the um, orange dot here? It gets larger. It, its y value gets larger and its x value gets smaller, right? Or if we make the area negative, then the, uh, the height of it, the sine, goes negative, but the cosine, which I'm tracking here with red, is still positive. So this is just everything you already know about the unit circle on sines and cosines. Um, and the, the red dot and the blue dot or uh, black dot are tracing out sine and cosine. But if we change this parameter to be negative one instead of positive one, let's see what happens to the unit circle. It's getting more and more squished because we're making this y value not kind of count as much toward the sum for one. So the y values can be larger and still have the sum be equal to one. And then, so we're kind of squishing the unit circle or stretching it, you could say, until it be, uh, to be an ellipse. And then if I push k past zero, then all of a sudden y is counting negatively and we get a hyperbola. So let's go look at what's happening there. Let's turn these off. Um, so now if I change the area under that curve, black is still tracing out kind of the equivalent of sine, the y value of the red dot of the orange dot here. And the red is tracing out the x value. It's staying positive the whole time. Um, so it's a similar kind of concept. We're now talking about the area of the shape rather than the angle. Um, but we don't need to worry about that. And let's check what's happening with that black dot. That's tracing out hyperbolic sine. So what shape are we getting there? Let's turn on that hyperbolic sine graph. So it's kind of like what we're used to for tangent, or um, but in this case it's hyperbolic sine. You might say it kind of looks like x cubed, but x cubed would be flat here in the middle rather than having a slope of 1. Um, and then here's hyperbolic cosine, what the red graph is, is tracing out, which looks like a parabola, but isn't. Um, and then we can also plot hyperbolic tangent, which is its own interesting thing. Uh, so that has horizontal asymptotes at plus 1 and minus 1. So that's a really useful curve if you are doing something that needs horizontal asymptotes. All right, let's go summarize this on paper. All right, so try to remember what we just saw there and draw it yourself before I draw it. So we had a hyperbola like that, and we were tracking um, a line like over here, and then that area, kind of like we should have been tracking the area all in there. And what did cinch, hyperbolic sign is pronounced cinch in the US? I've heard that in uh, Europe or the UK, it's pronounced shine, like they move the S, the H over there. I don't know. Um, so that looked kind of like this. And then what did uh, hyperbolic cosine or cosh look like? It looked kind of like a parabola, but it's not actually a parabola. Um, 
And then let's talk about uh, the calculus of the whole thing. Um, is it plausible that the derivative of cinch is cosh, looking at this graph? Uh, well, cinch always has a positive slope here. Here its slope is 1 and the value of cosh is 1. So it's plausible and in fact it's true. So the derivative of cinch is cosh. Now how about the derivative of cosh looking at this graph? Remember this is the black curve is cinch and the red curve is cosh. If you take the derivative of cosh, think about like here the slopes are negative and the value of cinch is negative. Here the slopes are positive on the red curve and the value of cinch is positive. Here of, for cosh the slope is zero and cinch has a slope of zero. So it looks like the derivative of cosh is cinch. Should it have a minus sign here? No, because here the value, the slope of cosh is negative and the value of cinch is negative, and those match without needing a, a, a flip of, for a minus sign. So that's an interesting difference between here and here. Probably relates to there being a minus here and a plus there, right? Um, now it turns out there are nice formulas for cinch and cosh. So cinch is e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2, and cosh is e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. And you might be saying, well, if there's such nice formulas for cinch and cosh, why aren't there nice formulas like that for sine and cosine? It turns out there are, if you use a bit of imagination, it turns out that sine x is equal to e to the i x, where i is the square root of negative 1, minus e to the minus i x over 2 i, and cosh, uh, a cosine x is e to the i x plus e to the negative i x over 2 without the i. Um, so if you're okay using complex variables, uh, you can just use these as definitions for sine and cosine. And actually that makes some things a lot easier. Um, so that's the basics of sine and cosine and cinch and cosh. Um, let's just write uh, tanch is, as, we, as you might expect, it's cinch over cosh. And if you think about if I divide one by the other here, I'm going to get something basically one because they're very close to each other. Over here, I'm going to get something. These are very similar, but one is negative, and so I'm going to get something near negative one. So the tanch curve has asymptotes at one and negative one. And that's useful, like I said, in uh, a lot of applications, including some neural nets use that. Um, what other applications are there? Um, the shape of a hanging uh, chain or cable. So I have my favorite paper clip chain here. It's hanging under its own weight. Let me kind of still it. It's hanging under its own weight. There's nothing pulling down on it like a roadway uh, for a suspension bridge. So that is a cosh shape. Um, uh, it might be um, scaled depending on how you move the supports toward each other or away from each other. Um, so uh, that's the shape of a hanging chain or cable under its own weight. Um, so we had something like that. Uh, for a suspension bridge, the roadway is hanging from each thing, and th even when the, the cable is tilted, it's getting pulled down by kind of an equal amount of weight per foot or per meter. Um, so the shape of a uh, um, hanging chain or cable pulled down by a roadway So something like this with a really heavy roadway here, that's actually more of a parabola. Um, the way bridges are designed these days about how close those supports are and how sharp the curve is, it's really hard to tell the difference between a caution and parabola. I think I heard that Galileo was even trying to figure out whether this shape is a parabola or not. Um, some other interesting applications, the big uh, St. Louis archway, 
let's get a picture of that on the screen. So here it is. It's obviously not a hanging cable. It's the shape of an upside down hanging cable or chain. And it's uh, it's the architect chose to, to make it a hyperbolic cosine. They've even got all the constants here, which means you could go build your own if you wanted. Um, it's amazingly tall. Uh, this section up here is actually tall enough for tourists to go tour and look out the windows. So that section there is probably 10, 12 feet thick. Uh, and you can, you can go up it. I did when I was in uh, St. Louis. Um, it's also a memorial for westward expansion. So yay, westward expansion, I suppose. Um, let's look at one other interesting application of caches. So there's something interesting in uh, wave mechanics. If you imagine a wave in a channel, like a canal or a river, um, usually if something started a wave, that wave would kind of disperse as it went along. But there's something called a soliton, which doesn't re uh, disperse, and they tend to have this shape, which you can actually model um, as a hyperbolic secant. That would be one over a hyperbolic cosine. So all kinds of interesting stuff going on there with hyperbolic cosines. Uh, so one thing I forgot to mention back here, one of my favorite trig identities is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, which you can imagine is related to x squared plus y squared equals 1. That would make a lot of sense, right? So what do you think would we could say about cinch squared and cosh squared? Probably a minus in there somewhere. And then which one is like x and which one is like y? Where would you put the minus? Or um, you could think about what do I have to do to one of these curves to get it close to the other one to get a, um, something about one. So you could think of it a few ways. You could say, well, cosh is like x, and here x is positive. So I'm going to put a positive here. And cinch is like y, uh, just like sine is like y. Um, and here uh, there's a negative on y, so I'm going to put a minus there. And then let's think about that. If I square cinch, it will be all positive but it will still be less than cosh squared. Uh, so if I do cosh squared minus cinch squared, I should get 1. So we could rewrite it like this, cosh squared minus cinch squared equals 1. And that helps us do trig substitutions uh, using hyperbolic trig that would involve yucky kind of tangents and stuff um, in ordinary circular trig. So that's another way to do some integrals in a fairly clean way.